good morning. I'm Bob with TEI, and this is Bob's Toolbox Talks. Today we're going to be talking about accumulators and charging them properly. Uh, first of all, let's take a look and see what an accumulator is. An accumulator accumulates or stores energy. Uh, several different uses for accumulators. We ain't even going to go into that right at the moment. Let's just go into the makeup and how to charge them. So this is an accumulator on one of our drifters. It's bolted to the side of a drifter and you got a high side and a low side. They really don't matter until you charge them and you've got to charge them correctly. You've got to have high pressure in the high side, low pressure in the low side. So inside this thing you've got a screen, you've got a diaphragm, you've got the back part of it, uh, you got a charge port and a little hole down there in the bottom. We'll get back into that here in a minute. So on your accumulator, when you put it together, you've got to have the diaphragm in correctly. The steel disc goes up against the screen. If you put it the other way, when the rubber comes up against the screen, it's just going to eat it. So the steel disc goes towards the screen, and then it gets all mounted down there, and then bolted together. This charge port here is got a cap on it, which is extremely important, because if you get debris down in there, the nitrogen won't go through this thing into the accumulator and do what it's supposed to do. So in the closed position, this part of it down in here is like a seat that seats it down against the body of it, and that's what seals the nitrogen inside the chamber. When you unscrew this nut, what it does is it opens this seat right here. So you can see the difference between it being open now And then being closed. Again, keep the cap on it. If you don't have caps on them, steal them off the boss's truck. They're the same thing as it's on a tire, uh, bicycle, ATV. Uh, don't steal them off the service truck though. You need the service truck. But when you put this thing into the accumulator, you torque this part into the accumulator with the torque wrench. The torque on that is 120 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds to torque this into there. Now when you close this thin nut down, it's pretty thin so don't get carried away or you'll strip it out. So you tighten that down to 55 inch pounds or 4.583 foot-pounds or 6.2137 newton meters. That was always fun to find out. The cap gets torqued to 5 inch pounds or 0.416 foot-pounds or 0.564 newton meters. Yeah, so give that a squinch. Don't tighten it too tight. You strip it. And make sure you give them a pretty good pretty good tight too. Even if you have to get a little bit of a pair of pliers and give them kind of a twist because these caps always seem to come back off. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get into the actual charging of it. So you've got a little nitrogen bottle. You don't need something that's great big. You just need something about like this. I don't know what size this one is, but you can guess by the picture of it. You've got to have it somewhere sturdy, and most of the time on an HEM or an HEMH, when you got these hoses here, I find that it's a great place to put this thing where it's not going to fall over. If you have to use this thing elsewhere, make sure you strap it down to where it won't fall over and possibly knock this cap off and turn this bottle into a rocket. So the first thing you do is just give it a little blowout of the dirt out of there and you got your charge kit here this is a regular charge kit and 
the inside here, you're going to find the charging instructions and the parts breakdown for the accumulator charge kit here. So this one's got two gauges on it. It's got a pressure gauge on both sides, but this is what's going to tell you what's in the tank. This is what's going to tell you what's in the accumulator. And then you've got your T-handle here that is going to adjust this regulator. Make sure everything's clean. Put that in there. Don't have to get too carried away to tighten the mat up. Then you've got a charge uh, needle valve is what they call it. This T-handle here has nothing to do with charging the accumulators on our drifters. What it does, it's got a little needle down in the side of that thing that if you've got like a, uh, a Schrader valve where you've got to push it down like on a vehicle or ATV or whatever, what that does is once you get this thing connected up to your accumulator, you push that down and it pushes that needle down and lets the nitrogen go past it. But on our application, we don't use that for our grifters. It's also got a copper washer down on the inside of that thing. Make sure that it ain't all damaged and screwed up and all that other stuff or you're gonna have to replace it too. But we've got a deal that'll go on there and tighten down on the accumulators. We've got a rebuilt accumulator right over here. So the first thing we're gonna do, take the cap off of it. And this is already loose. We put a little bit of lubricant on the O-ring on this thing before we tightened it up into the accumulator body. Eleven sixteenths wrench. So now we've got our gauges all connected up there. Our handle is out, so there's no spring tension on it. We're going to open up our tank slowly. We're going to look at our pressure gauge to see that we got over 800, 900 psi. If you don't have 900 PSI in this gauge, you can't get as much as you need to in this accumulator. So we've got everything hooked up. We've got our uh, adapter tightened up here. We've got our seat opened up. And if you look down in the side of that screen, you can see where that diaphragm is down inside there. When you start putting nitrogen pressure to it, you're going to see that thing come up. So we haven't got too much in there now. A little over 100 PSI. And look down in there, and you can see where that steel disc is up against that screen. Now we know that we're actually getting nitrogen into this thing. So what we'll do is we'll crank this thing up and we'll call this thing a high pressure accumulator. Where are we at there? Uh, it's 7, 720. Okay, we're about 700. Right at 800 PSI. Now, we're going to take our nut right here, and we are going to tighten it up and close that seat. It'll go down hard, and then it'll go down easy. 
but remember that's 55 inch pounds so it's not much once we get that taken care of got our nitrogen in there we're going to back our screw back out Until we don't feel any tension on that screw. Shut our tank off and we've got that accumulator charged. Now we can take our adapter off of it. Put our cap back on there. And give it just a little bit of a squinch, right like that. That's how you charge an accumulator off of the drill. High side accumulator is 800 to 900 psi or 40 percent of the operating pressure. The low pressure accumulator is 80 to 100 or 5 percent of operating pressure. The way you can tell if you're high side or low side. If you look around at this, this model is a TE760. It's the same as the, the 550, 560, 760, 726. It's pretty much all the same. Right on the side here, on the hammer section, is an HP, high pressure. On this side, it says LP, low pressure. It's really easy to remember. 880. 880. So when you go to charging the accumulators on a drifter like this, of course they uh, they hide them underneath all these hoses. That's what good engineers do is they hide things that you're really going to get after. So what I'm doing is taking the nut off or the cap off of it right now. Like I said, keep these caps on it. It's major important. If you get debris down in there, it gets into the accumulator, what it'll do is it get behind the diaphragm and it can put a grain of sand right through that diaphragm. So we've got our two little wrenches out again. We're going to take and hook up our adapter to it. Give that a tighten. And then we're going to go loosen that seat again. And if you watch them gauges, as soon as this seat comes open, that gauge is going to go up. Keep screwing that nut. All right, now if you look at our gauge here, that red line, that first one, is 100 PSI and we're a little bit below it. So it's pretty close to about 60, which if you've got 80 PSI in your accumulator and you introduce the hose to it, you're introducing more volume to it. Once you open that valve, the pressure's gonna come down because you introduce more volume to it and that pressure is going to go out into that volume and you're not going to have as much in here. That's how you can tell if that accumulator was charged up correctly or not. If it is the same every day that you check it, then you know that accumulator's holding charge. So what we're going to do is we got our tank on, we got all connected up, we're 
we're going to bump that up a little bit. On the low side, it doesn't take very much. About right like that. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to shut that needle valve out. Off. And this process is the same with all of our drifters. It doesn't matter if it's an old 300 or if it's a brand new 760 uh, TE1000, uh, TE160. As long as it's got accumulators on it, it's the same process. So we've got our needle valve shut off. I'm going to unscrew our T-handle here, shut her tank off, and we're going to take our adapter off here. Put the cap back on it, very, very important. Give it a little bit of a tighten job. And there you go. Same as on the high side accumulator. Once you put your adapter on there and you open your needle valve on it, this gauge here, if it had 800 in it, it may be down to 600 because you introduced volume to the accumulator which drops the PSI on it. If it's the same every day, you're checking it and you bump it up each time to 800 PSI, then you know that accumulator is charged and it's maintaining its charge. Make sure it tanks off. Take our gauge off of here, put it back in the box. Take your key handle out. Side. Put the charging instructions back in the box for the next guy. Closed up, and there you have it.